Welcome to the Procure IT Essentials Training. This module explores the fundamental elements of the Procure IT framework used by New South Wales government agencies and industry when procuring ICT products and services with the government. Before we start, we want to make clear that this webinar was prepared by the ICT Category Management Team to provide general information on Procure IT for buyers not familiar with the framework. It is not comprehensive and it does not constitute legal advice. The objective of this webinar is to provide you with general information about the Procure IT framework so that by the end of the session you will be able to understand the New South Wales Government requirements for procuring ICT products and services, identify fundamental elements of the Procure IT framework, identify potential legal risks when creating contracts, and locate the relevant legislation, regulations, policy and guidelines. The legislative framework for procurement in New South Wales is the Public Works and Procurement Act 1912, which defines procurement as identifying the need to purchase goods and services, selecting suppliers for goods and services, and contracting and placing orders for goods and services, including the disposal of goods that are unserviceable or no longer required. This training module is looking at the third step, contracting under the Procure IT framework. So what is the Procure IT framework? The Procure IT framework is a standard contract for all government agencies and is mandated by the Procurement Board to use when buying ICT goods and services. The New South Wales Procurement Board is responsible for overseeing New South Wales government procurement systems, setting policy and ensuring compliance across government. It has the statutory power to issue directions to agencies, make decisions and monitor the progress of agency compliance. If you'd like to find out more information about the Procurement Board, it can be found on the ProcurePoint website under the Policy and Reform tab here. It's important that you understand what directions the Board have set in relation to ICT goods and services. There are two Board decisions that you should be aware of. Procurement Board Directive 2017-02 regarding the mandated use of Procure IT for the procurement of ICT goods and services and Procurement Board Directive 2016-01, which defines approved goods and services procurement arrangements for New South Wales government agencies, including Procure IT. The Procure IT framework must be used by New South Wales government buyers for the acquisition of ICT products and services. The framework is designed so products and services can be acquired through a panel arrangement or a non-panel arrangement. We will be looking at panel arrangements first. Panel arrangements are where an entity acts as the contract authority and establishes a master purchasing arrangement or standing offer. The contractors agree to offer certain products and services under the master arrangement at pre-agreed prices with core terms and conditions for a defined term. The contractor would be required to sign a head agreement prior to being accepted on the panel. Non-panel arrangements do not require the use of a head agreement and alternative procurement processes can be used. So we'll now be looking at the four components of panel arrangements under Procure IT. The first is the head agreement, which describes the relationship between the contract authority and the contractor for the administration of the panel arrangement, including the products and services that can be acquired under the panel agreement, how the, those products and services can be updated during the term of the agreement, which entities are entitled to acquire products and services, and which approved agents can be used by the contract to supply products and services. The second part is the customer contract, which defines the relationship between the contract authority and the contractor for the supply of products and services. In Procure IT, the head agreement must be cross-referenced in item seven of the general order form in the customer contract. Part three of the framework is the dictionary, which outlines defined terms that the contracting of the agency and contractor need to be aware of. The last component are the module and module order forms. There are 13 of these to select under the Procure IT framework. The modules to be completed are dependent on the products or services required. For example, hardware and software both have separate module order forms. Non-panel arrangements only contain the customer contract, dictionary and module order forms. You might be asking yourself, when do I use the panel arrangement? Arrangements are used when a whole of government contract has been set up for specific services. So the ICT service that you want to purchase has a panel arrangement. What do you do next? The first
first step is to review the head agreement which applies between the agency head and contractor. The second step is to review Annex 3 of the head agreement which specifies products and services, check insurance, security and other requirements. The third step is to complete the customer contract including item 7, complete the general order form, select and complete the modules and module order forms. What if the ICT service that you want to purchase has no panel arrangement in place? If there is no panel arrangement, you need to follow normal procurement processes, finding a registered supplier from the Scheme 20, which is the pre-qualification scheme for ICT goods and services, using e-quote or e-tendering to select your preferred supplier. You will then complete the customer contract, general order form, modules and module order forms. Do not fill out item 7 of the general order form if there, as there is no panel arrangement. So we'll now look at preparing customer contracts. There are three steps to preparing and executing customer contract. The first step is to download the customer contract template from the ProcurePoint website. Where can I find this? So on ProcurePoint, at the top menu, there is a Before You Buy tab. If you click this, on the menu, you will see a link to standard procurement contract templates. Click through and you will see links to the short form and long form Procure IT contracts. Procure IT was updated to version 3.2 on the 1st of July this year and became mandatory on the 1st of September. Changes to Procure IT will be discussed in a separate webinar. However, I would like you to draw your attention to the BEDA website, which has information on the long form contract. It has enhanced functionality not available on ProcurePoint. All documents are linked so that you can easily move between them with just one click. Glossaries are incorporated within the documents themselves with pop-up definitions of term. No longer do you need to reference the glossary separate to other documents. Keywords are tagged and searchable. You can easily see the keywords in each page of the document. Search functionality enables you to search on keywords and navigate directly to the content you are looking for. Our aim is to significantly enhance the user experience in working with Procure IT version 3.2. As this is a beta website, all feedback you provide is much appreciated. So we're drawing this distinction between a short form and a long form contract. But when can I use a short form contract? First question you need to ask yourself is, is there a panel arrangement for this ICT service? If there is, you must use the panel arrangement. If there isn't a panel arrangement, you need to conduct a risk assessment to find out whether your procurement is low or high risk. If it's high risk, you need to use the long form contract. But if it's low risk, you need to assess that the price of the entire value of the contract is less than 150000 If it is, if it isn't, please use the, you must use the long form contract. But if your procurement is low risk and less than 150000 use the short form contract. So the second step in preparing a customer contract, you need to complete general order form schedule one. If your contract is simple and low risk, complete items one to 15. If it's complex or high risk, complete items six to 43, remembering item seven, so panels only. Complete item eight, which is to select applicable modules to download and complete the corresponding module order forms. Complete item nine, which requires you to select the applicable schedules List additional conditions, if applicable, in item 43 and complete all other required items. Module order forms can be found on the ProcurePoint website on the same page as the long form contracts, as well as on the beta website. The third step is to execute the customer contract. Both parties will need to sign the completed general order form. But before you do this, you need to make sure that you have considered all potential legal risks and they have been evaluated and added to the contract. These risks include liquidation damages, return of material, loss and escrow, termination, privacy and warranties, confidentiality, limitation of liability and insurance, variations, intellectual property and securities, and indemnities. You should now be able to identify the New South Wales Government requirements in procuring ICT products and services, Define the fundamental elements of the Pure IT framework. Identify potential legal risks when creating contracts. Locate the relevant legislation, policy, regulations and guidelines. What's next? 
Links to all policies discussed in this video are contained on the training module page. If you'd like to learn more about Procure IT, the following webinars are available. A case study into the short form and long form contract, as well as a webinar discussing the key changes in Procure version 3.2. Thank you. If you'd like to provide feedback, please email newsouthwalesby at finance.newsouthwales.gov.au. Thank you.